going to get right into our first email question of the night that deals with a first party case. Yes. Uh, I have an investment property, uh, a neighbor's garage burned down. My property was damaged. The fire department said the fire started at his place. He has an insurance ex inspector over, but didn't look at mine. My damage is about 5,000 and the deductible is 5,000. Do I have to pay for this, Mike? Right, and, and, and Mike, that's a good interplay of first party and third party insurance there in that one question. For example, the individual that had his home burned down where the fire started, the claim he is pursuing is a first party claim on his own policy. He bought insurance to protect him from certain perils. You know, one, one that we're very familiar here with is the hurricane damage that everybody dealt with. But a, a common coverage is for fire coverage, and that's what that gentleman had his inspector out there to look at. And he bought that coverage. The peril happened, coverage is triggered, and he will be compensated for his loss with respect to his property. The question with respect to your uh, damage to your property is a different analysis. You have what's called a third party claim against that gentleman for if you can establish that that fire was a result of some sort of failure to use reasonable care or negligence, which it sounds like you have right. a good chance to be able to establish this in this particular case, then you can do a liability claim against that gentleman. Now that inspector would not have been out there and checked on your property right. without you having actually opened a claim and put them on notice. But absolutely, that's something you need to do, Mike. That's something you need to pursue. And it's something that would be probably pretty difficult to handle on your own so, because there's a lot of causation issues with fires in particular right. um, that require some expert analysis. So that, that's going to require some help of some professionals. And it could be a different adjuster that goes out and looks at Mike's absolutely. property on behalf of his neighbor, but also Mike needs to file a claim for his own policy, his own first party claim as well. Absolutely. I, the, the only problem I see potentially there on that first party claim is it sounds like the damages may be as much as the deductible. Right. So it may not be, you may have coverage, but it may be coverage that's really not fruitful because it doesn't make, uh, exceed the deductible. So, so Ted, we're throwing out a lot of, a lot of I'm, I'm, we're quarterbacking here, yeah. hey, run 32, green, red, whatever, first party, sec, uh, third party, mm. what does that mean? What's first party and what's different between first right. party and third party? Right, right. Just, just basically first party means that you have the contract with the insurance company. You buy your homeowner's policy, that is a first party uh, policy. You pay a premium for a contract that provides coverage if certain things happen. Now, and it Insurance company uh, insurance is a contract between right. you and that insurance company. You and the insurance company. So you say if the, you pay this amount of money for this amount of coverage, and if the risk happens, then that then it provides the coverage for whatever that be. Life insurance is another example of a first party policy. We talk very often about uh, uninsured motorist yes. coverage. That involves an accident that happens with you and someone else, but you actually have a contract with your insurance company that will trigger and provide you with benefits if you are hit by someone who has inadequate uh, insurance or maybe right. not no insurance. Now, third party coverage, that happens when someone else causes an accident and you have uh, injuries as a result, whether that is professional malpractice in either a legal or medical context, most frequently that we're dealing with are car accidents or premises liability when you slip and fall or trip and fall on a property. Right. And that is coverage that you buy um, the, the homeowner, the car owner, whatever, the professional that protects you if you are sued by someone else because you have injured them. Um, the way that our system works in America, we've all bought insurance yep. so that we're protected if we hurt somebody and so that we don't have to lose our assets to compensate that person. So, and you know, Tim, we talk about first, uh, first party and third party, you know, that in insurance contracts, that is a contract between mm. you and that person. And, right. and I think you touched on it. You agree to compensate me in the event this happens, but I agree to pay you in exchange for that right. compensation. And it's a contract. Right. And so with that being a contract, a lot of people, you know, the, a, a famous thing that gets said to us frequently, Chris, is that I have full coverage. And, and I get a chuckle every time I hear right. that because they're, full coverage in the legal context really just means the base coverage that's required in Florida, for, right. which for auto accidents only means 10,000 of PIP no fault benefits, which are essentially built in health or wage loss benefits on your policy that protects you if you're in an accident and $10,000 of property damage that would protect if you hurt somebody else's car. That's it that Florida mandates currently. Right. Um, and so that's not sufficient to protect you if you hurt somebody. So we got, you know, a lot of major universities, but let's just Rattle them off. We've got Pensacola, we've got Panama City, we've got Tallahassee, we've got Gainesville, South Florida, Central Florida, and Miami. So we've got a lot of college students driving around on yes. these roads. 
What happens when the college student says, hey, look, I'm legal. I'm doing what the Florida law tells me to do, but I don't have enough insurance to cover you for your losses, and I'm sorry. Right. And that's why you And that's a difficult conversation to have with somebody is that they feel like they were protected and they felt like they did what they were supposed to do. They're following the law, but the law is just the minimum that's required, and that's not sufficient to protect you. It's not sufficient to take care of you. Um, the, The difficult cases that we have where somebody's had a very traumatic loss and injury, and then we find out that the individuals that caused it had little or no insurance, and then the client didn't protect themselves with the uninsured motorist right. coverage, that's, that's tough. And when you look that's to right. see how inexpensive that coverage yes. is in relation to what the benefits are provided. Um, um, it, it, go ahead, I'm sorry. Yeah, it's, it's so important that in order to not have it, you actually have to sign a rejection form saying, I do not want this coverage. So the insurance agents have to actually offer it to you because it is so important. It's one of the, I mean, the reason you buy insurance is for risks and for risk you cannot afford. I am not going to buy an insurance policy for if I lose this pen. I'll just buy another pen. If I get in a wreck and I have $100,000 of medical expenses, that's a whole different avenue. So you want to be protected. So there's certain types of coverage. UM is one. Mm-hmm. You have to reject it because it's so important. And that's mandated by the state of Florida, Better. not by the insurance no, companies. Our, that's our, that's our legislature. Agents. That's the Florida legislature that says that you have to sign this document to reject this coverage because it's very important, right. like you say, because it protects you in the event that somebody else causes a loss to you mm-hmm. that can't compensate you. And we commonly refer to it as UM or UIM. It's mm-hmm. underinsured or, under, or uninsured motorist coverage. And it is priceless because not only does it protect you, Ted, but it would protect your family, your wife. Right. And that's something that frequently people don't understand. But if they're, they're, most policies, it will provide coverage for any, anyone that you are married to or that is a blood relative that is living in your household. So when you're in an accident, it's important not to just look at your policy, but all household policies, which could particularly, right. potentially provide you coverage because you're paying that premium for that benefit, right. and if you do not utilize it when an accident happens, there's no use in ever having the coverage. I mean, I've had many of people say, uh, I was in this accident, I don't want to file anything on my policy, and, and my immediate response is, well, then you need to quit paying for this coverage, because yeah. this is why you yeah. bought it, for times like this, and, and, and know, this it, is happening. Because a lot of people, they're, they're concerned or worried, hey, I, f- I make a claim against my policy, right. and now they're either going to drop me or my insurance rates going to go up because we've all experienced insurance mm-hmm. rates going up or either being dropped from the hurricane that we went through four years ago. And guess what everybody got in, or a lot of people got in the mail, including myself, and I think you also, Ted, hey, yeah. we're canceling your coverage and we don't want your money because we don't want to insure you anymore because you, and you felt like you made a claim against them, which they had to pay, you know, because we, they insured against a right. hurricane. Well, right. a lot of people get worried about, hey, I, don't, I love my car insurance company, the lizard's been behind me forever, or Flo, or whoever it's been, and I don't want to lose that coverage. Right, and, and you know, and the, the main thing, the analysis, you know, insurance companies are going to do whatever they're going to do right. with respect to coverage. For example, with the hurricanes, they're, they're canceling coverage because they're going bankrupt and they can't afford. Well, they say they that's, are. Well, that's, that's Ted's opinion. That's <laughs> not the, <laughs> everything the be all. But with respect to UM, that's not a fault-based claim. I mean, the, one of the major factors in premium analysis is what's your risk base. Right. And that's not establishing that you're a more riskier uh, bet than someone else's. You just happen to be unfortunate enough to get hit by somebody. But they can't, they can't cancel you for making a claim against your uninsured motorist. No, they should, they, they they, really, it's not a chargeable event, I they should, say. They should They can cancel not, you at any they, time. But. They should not. It would right. not be an appropriate uh, maneuver in right. that particular place. But, uh, you know, it's, it's, it's a weird world we're living in right now. Um, no, you know, you don't say. Especially in the <laughs> state of Florida. You know, we just got hit with another hurricane. Who knows what's going to happen with the first yes. party. But in the, in the first party context, you know, I, I, I talked to a lot of people who didn't realize they didn't have wind coverage or hurricane coverage right. because that's an exceptional portion of your premium on a, on a homeowner's policy. And that coverage is so important that you have to sign a rejection if you're not going to have it. Ted, we have listeners also in the Alabama and Georgia region, and this is not, you know, just Florida specific. No. I mean, first party and third party claims uh, you know, apply to Alabama and also to right. Georgia as well. No, and, and you know, Alabama fortunately does have mandatory yeah. minimum coverages on automobile accidents. If you're legal, you're supposed to have 25000 per person. 
50,000 in coverage available per accident um, in Alabama, but it's still critical to have the uninsured motorist coverage there as well because A, that's still not a lot if you have a serious accident, and B, unfortunately, there's people that aren't running, that are running around breaking the law. Right.